best not to make one move to resist the World Economic Forum. I know, so many of us today are outraged, and probably rightfully so. We have a group of the richest making the world in their image. Our world, and our lives included. But what if this? What if that which you resist grows stronger? Resistance is to be involved in competition against an adversary, to seek to win in a deadly chess game. War is such a thing, and this is a new kind of war, a war on the lives we all knew, a war on agreements past made, a war on the freedoms, rights, and quality of life of mankind itself. And yet I plead with you, do not fight, for that which you resist grows stronger. Is there another approach than conflict? I am one who shouts in the wilderness with a loud voice, yes, there is, but the path to tread may not be the easiest, although the reward, which is not a reward at all, is the most substantial. Nothing short of coming to meet true life itself. You see, the Great Reset is a very old movement. Mao, Stalin, only to revisit recent times, had their very own. And the history books are filled with the tales of unfathomable sorrow, of the millions upon millions upon millions of lives lost in pursuit of an ideology which inevitably comes to fail every time. And the reason such attempts must fail is that the road taken and the destination share a similar quality. The reason such attempts fail is because of an incredible amount of illusion surrounding our perceptions. We have no idea where, what, or even when our lives exist. I don't mean in a description, I don't mean in words, I mean beyond all descriptions, images and words. We have no idea why we live so disorderly. We have no idea what this universe is, perceived without reliance on symbols and words, on structured language. And words are symbols. We have no idea why we live so disorderly. Nor do we see the relationship between how we live and the structure of our inner psychologically divided minds. These are identical. We have no idea nor understanding of death, which we fear. And so we also fear life, for every one of us sits in the very same waiting room. We have no idea why we hear inner talking and meet inner divisions, or why this inner world we all live within comes to so fill and distract our days. We are lost to relationship. For how can relationship exist in a world of constantly, inwardly divided, distracted and isolated human beings? We are lost. And if we are lost, why do we seek to remove the stick from the eyes of our rich, very deluded brothers and ignore the forest in our own eyes totally obscuring our living universe? The most worthy in life to meet must be to cast absolute understanding of life. Life is not what is thought about it. Life is not remembered experiences. Life is here and life is now. The tragedy of life is we are all somewhere else. We are hiding inwardly in fear, or we are planning our dastardly great reset, or we are resisting another's fighting back. We are all seeking something. That which we seek is the very point in which humanity fractures. We all seek differently because we all carry differing knowledge from which we think. We find security continuing and building upon this limited knowledge. Past to future, a sense of progress, a sense of success, which is a mechanical limiting and illusory approach to life. A life led within predominantly inner symbols. You want to change this world? Do you seriously want to change this world? Then you must do nothing less than go through a complete inner psychological revolution. Do you see this? Then you are blessed among men. Or how can we have a better world unless it is being built by better people than we are today? This is the world we have built and the people of Davos are our most successful, apparently. I really think, as a race, the time has come to question whether success is as good at carving out our future communal path as intelligence might be. And what lies behind the word intelligence? Might it be the art of living well, of living now, of living here, and of living in completion? Meaning, no inner movements of self-interest leading my way. This is the inner psychological movement which divides us, 
the inner psychological revolution we need meet is nothing other than the complete cessation of the movement of self within, the ending of the human ego. This is the rebirth of the human mind and its reconnection to the silence and space of this creative, evolving, loving universe. We do not live in true connection to our senses. A silent mind is needed for this. A silent mind demands the ending of all inner movements, which is the death of the inner center you carry psychologically, which you now identify with as what you are. Heaven is where you are, only you are not there. Waste no energy on those in this world who chase after their own shadows and consider themselves geniuses for doing so. Waste no time resisting those born in tyrannically limited vision by virtue of being born into immeasurable wealth. Spend your energies on this and be a true pioneer in life. Understand your life and understand your death and come home. You have been missed, wandering far as you have. A real security is here to be found if you can look and awaken perception. Meet the self, which is memory. Watch patiently for as long as it takes and learn about this inner divisive mechanism part tradition, part brain-rotting education. Find out if you can come to find true meaning in this, your lifetime, or waste it fighting against clueless fools as your life is clueless, without understanding and as you act foolishly. For you live in the past and you are the past, and the past of humanity is a repetitive loop of memorized tragedies, conflicts and pains. War and suffering. Walk with these words into yourself. You could be the very dawning of a totally new beginning, unimaginable to knowledge and unable to be planned for by virtue of never having been before. The new, the new is our revolution. Find the new. Find a new self which will build a new society. For the old one is so old, it truly needs to die. But for the old society to die, that which maintains its divisive ways and continually feeds our wars must first come to end. This is the movement of our thinking, which holds our divisive nationalities, religions, ideas, politics, class status, and many other divisions between our people. And divisions are the root cause of all of our conflicts and wars. Can we find relationship between us in this lifetime, which is to live surely in full understanding of our lives and deaths, which are one movement eternally now. Do you want to meet the entire universe? You can go through yourself to find it, without ending the inner divisive movement of that which isolates you from complete perception and divides one man from another. We are incapable of finding anything other than chaos. You are as responsible as Mr. Schwab for the chaos in this world, because we all live inwardly chaotically, and our actions follow our inward chaotic movements. Learn the art of silence and perception now. Deny becoming, which is a scholastically trained capitalist illusion. Deny the past, which is already dead and gone. Deny the future, which has only ever been an idea, projected as modified continuity of the past. Watch thought. Thought is the societally programmed mechanism which is corrupting our whole world. The understanding of the relationship between what is watching thought and what is being seen has transformative powers to life. If you can stand to watch, without choice. How can you see at all if you choose what it is you see? This world changes when human beings change, and the change demands a death of what came before. Do you have what it takes to pick up your cross, climb your mountain, and be crucified for the sake of being born anew to perception, released from living in a world of eternal inward symbols? Do you? Then start walking, for you are the only hope for the future of humanity.